Okay, as usual in any force problem, we are going to get started drawing our free body diagram. So what we're dealing with here is just a box suspended by two ropes or cables, and we want to find the value of tension 1 if theta here is 30 degrees and our angle here is 60 degrees and the weight of this box is 139.3 newtons. So again, we're going to get started as always. We always get started the same way with a free body diagram of our object. As long as we're on the planet Earth, that's a, I guess that's an assumption. We have our force of gravity acting down and they gave that to us as 139 point three newtons there is no normal force it's not being supported by anything other than the cables pulling up so now I'm imagine I'm the box I'm being pulled on by a rope this way so that force is going this way and we're going to call that force T1 I'm also being pulled on by a force this way the other rope or cable by a tension force and we're calling that T2 that's the only thing touching the box those are the only forces. Most important job is done, that free body diagram. Now our force summations in the x and y direction. We're going to use a standard axis which says positive x is to the right, positive y is up. Now these problems we do the same thing every single time. Now that we have our free body diagram, we can just look at the free body diagram to do our force summation. So we're going to add up all of the forces in the x direction. Uh-oh, I have a problem. These, these forces here are angled. They're not in the x, they're not in the y. I call those rebel forces and we need to break those bad boys down. So sometimes we panic when this happens. Don't panic, it's no biggie. What we're going to do is instead of using T1 here. I'm just going to make this smaller so we have uh, so we have room here. Instead of using force T1, I'm going to use the equivalent, which would be a combination of tension one in the y direction plus a combination of tension one in the x direction. So basically, this force here is replaced by its vertical and horizontal component. Now sometimes students ask, well how do I know which directions the components go? Well first of all the components always start at the beginning of your force and they connect head to tail just like if you remember adding vectors and if your vector, if your force goes up and to the right then your components must go, I'm sorry, <laughs> I don't know my left and from my right. If your force goes up and to the left, your components must go up and to the left. Here's another angled vector, so we have to break that rebel force into components as well. So instead of an angled force, which is no good to us because we can't put it in the x summation, we can't put it in the y summation, we are going to use its components. So this would be the T2Y component and the T2X component. I should have drawn this a tad larger. Okay, so that's what we're going to use there. Keep in mind, we have completely replaced these forces. So before we can start our force summation, we kind of have to do a problem off to the side. And I'll do this for those of you who uh, are a little shaky on Sokotoa. If you are, I have a great video that really uh, demonstrates using um, Sokotoa, as I remember it. And basically, what we need to do is we need to find out what the values of these are based on, I mean, in terms of T1 and T2. So I'm just going to take this little triangle here and I'm just going to blow it up just so that we can really see what's going on here. So here are my components. I'm trying to find out what they are equal to. I know that this angle here is 30 degrees. I know that from the original problem. And I know that this is my 90 degree angle. So I say to myself, okay, self, 
if I am looking at this side of my triangle here, this side is opposite because it's not attached at all to this angle. So if it's opposite, if we have so ka to -a, if this angle, if this side is opposite, okay, we have the opposite side and we know we're going to use this hypotenuse, so we're going to use our sine function. So our sine function would be sine 30 equals the opposite, which is our y component, over the hypotenuse, which is our t1 value. I'm going to solve for my y component and when I do that I find out that t1y is equal to t1 sine 30. Using this exact same technique I'm going to find the components for my other triangles. Now, if you notice, in all of the excitement, I completely forgot to put in my signs. I tend to do this, and I bet you tend to do this as well. Um, so, let's go back and look. This component here, T1Y, is going up, so it's a positive value. Okay, oh, I'm sorry, T1X is going to the left, so that is a negative value. T2x is going to the right, so that's positive. T1y goes up, that's positive. And T2y goes up, so that's positive. So the only one I needed to fix here was T1x. I know some of you were probably screaming at your screens as I was doing it, and that's great. That means you totally get it. Now we're going to add up these components. So we're going to take a look at, we're going to go, kind of go back to where we were before. Okay, so now let's take a look and add all of our x components. The only x components we have are t1x uh, and that's a negative t1 cosine 30 and the other x value is positive t2x but t2x we know is equivalent to T2 cosine 60. On the other side, I'm going to add up my Y forces. So I have one, two, three Y forces. Two are positive, so I have T1Y, which is T1 sine 30, and I have T2Y, which is equal to T2 sine 60. I did those components beforehand. You can do them during. It's completely up to you. So, and also we have this negative force. Oh no, no room. Negative 139.3. Okay, now the other thing we need to acknowledge is Newton's second law told us the sum of all forces in the x direction is equal to ma max. And because our box is not moving. That's an assumption we're making. It's just hanging there. It's not accelerating. The acceleration is zero, so this is just going to um, simplify to zero, and then that's going to leave us with everything else. Actually, I'll just make it zero up here, but I want to be sure you realize why that is the case. Here, because our, we have zero acceleration and uh, Newton's law told us that the sum of all forces in the y direction is equal to may mass times acceleration in the y direction. Well, we're not accelerating in the y direction, so that's going to be zero as well. Now we just do some algebra. At this point, you may have a tendency to panic. Oh no, I have two unknowns. I can't go any further. Eh, don't worry about it. Move over to the other side and simplify this as far as you can go. All right, two equations, two unknowns. Don't panic. If you panic, your brain shuts down. Think back to algebra. When you have two equations and two unknowns, we're just going to solve them simultaneously. So let's do that. There we go. And we all know I'm a bad singer, but I got to do it. 
I like it. I love it. I want some more of it. Okay, you did a great job. If there have any questions, just put them in the comments and I'll go ahead and answer them. Remember, just take it step by step. Get simpler and simpler with every step and don't panic and you're going to be good to go. Make it a great day.